Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you might be in this wonderful world. Today, we are going to go for a little tour around southern Dorset. There's some lovely hills, some pretty little villages. There's a bit of coastline. I'm not quite sure where we're going. We're just going for a little exploration. And we'll see what pictures we can get along the way. This isn't about doing perfect landscapes this time. It's about recording a great memory in the best way possible. So why aren't I recording this one? Well, I will. But you know what? The big vista can often not make the best picture because there'll be too much going on. You see, we've got a bit of light here. We've got a bit of light down here. Shame there isn't any over there on Pool Harbour. But it isn't bad. And I quite like these clouds in either corner of the frame sort of framing up Pool Harbour. Why have I got the horizon so low? Well, if we put it in the middle, it's kind of like, do we need all this darkness in the foreground? Probably not. I think it looks better up here. What about settings? Well, the settings for a shot like this, they're not really going to make much difference because we are not using depth of field. Everything is beyond infinity. So what we need to do is record the exposure so that we've captured all the detail. Looking at my histogram, that says fine. So let's just take that like that. It's a nice view across to Pool Harbour. If we had a little pool of light highlighting just sort of one area, it would probably look more interesting. But hey, what a great place. It is so beautiful up here. So let's hit the road, go for a little ride down to the coast, inland a bit. I don't know, this is just one of those tumble along and see what happens. And that's what we'll do. See what happens. So this is exactly the sort of place that you might come for an afternoon out. It's really rather lovely, isn't it? Now the light is not ideal, a hardcore landscaper wouldn't even consider taking a photograph down here at this time of day in this kind of light. But you may not be a hardcore landscaper, you just may be someone who wants to go out and have a little look around, take a couple of photographs and, you know, come home with some reasonable pictures. <laughs> it's rather lovely isn't it you just think how cool this would look at the right time of year when the sun's setting over there somewhere absolutely gorgeous so I'm of course automatically just coming into the car park but I don't know if that's a good idea because I don't know where that little road goes I think we should just go down it and find out don't you probably says go away yeah, it does <laughs> but hey if you don't go you don't know Now, if it's a case of you're only going to stop in the car park and come up to the edge, then if you've got a super wide angle lens, then I would say this is a really nice image, just like this up here, because we've got all these lines going out into the sea. Wouldn't it be great if there was a boat in the bay to really grab our attention? But hey, there isn't. The thing is, 
don't just sort of come here and look around and go, oh look, over there, there's a tower on the hill and then just crazily zoom in on it like this and go click because that's really nothing like as interesting as making the lens wider and then including some of these lines. Tilt the camera down a bit. Look at these lines come out here. This little bit of cliff edge here. It all just helps the composition because really that's what you're going to be working with because the light isn't perfect. So to do the best you can, think about composing elements within the picture. Where are we? Not just here's a tower on a hilltop because it could be anywhere. It could be anything but this amazing sort of rock formations down here going into the water, they're gorgeous. And the same if you were looking the other way. I quite like the fact there are some people down there on the rocks. Now, it could be that zooming in a bit could help. You see, if we zoom in down there, look, you see there's some people down there. I love having little human figures in my picture. So maybe something like that, but also, Let's go wide, let's, let's use these fingers going out into the water because I think they look great. And I like that cloud up there in the top, it's kind of echoing these shapes. Now I know the purist says do not put the horizon in the middle, but actually it works quite well being very close to the middle, if not in the middle, and tilting the camera down a bit, having a few of these little grasses in the bottom edge, that helps too. So let's take those two and see what they look like. So here we go. What about depth of field? Well, I'm gonna use F9. In fact, I might go a little smaller just because I want to keep these grasses in shot. So I'm gonna to go to F16. That means a thousandth of a second will be too slow. That's what's on my camera right now. So let's just compensate and slow that shutter speed down to a 250th. I'm gonna focus. I don't know where I'm gonna focus. I'm gonna focus down below actually on the beach and hope that there is enough depth of field to hold it together. Here's the picture. Let's zoom in on it and see if it's sharp. I'm gonna look in here and how about our little flowers? Yeah, they're good, they're good. F16 with a short lens, everything just works. But also you could do something with the lens quite wide, just angling down and using like these three rocks. They're just pointing out to see. Again, wouldn't it be great if there was a boat there or something? but it is really rather lovely. Again, the super wide angle of the GoPro looks dramatic, but actually I think there's just too much foreground going on down here. But foreground is also your friend in this case, not always, but in this case it is. Because if you think, let's use the wide angle lens, we'll get the tower, we're gonna get some of these fingers going out into the sea, it will look nice if we just shoot it like that. But I think in this case, we could use a little bit more depth. And down here, look, there's a lovely big rock with a lovely shadow on this side of it. So look, let's see what we can come up with. So if I kind of, I can't see very well in the viewfinder, but here is our original shot. It's just kind of looking out over there and it's nice. But if we then come down lower, look, bend the knees. Get down here on the gravel. Look, you see, when we bring that rock into shot, now I don't like the fact they're kind of lining up. We got, look, we got rock and we've got tower. We want to kind of move them to different sides of the frame. So let's move the horizon, let's move things. Let's just move to the left a little like this. And suddenly that is a lot, lot nicer. Now notice I'm keeping quite a lot of sky going on there because I think too much foreground isn't really going to help. Well, maybe that height, I think, is probably just right. Let me get that lovely little patch of green going on. What do we need? Well, we're gonna want lots of depth of field, aren't we? So again, I'm using F16. Uh, the exposure hasn't changed from when we were up on the top, 250 of the second, F16, 250 ISO, because the light hasn't changed. and. Manual exposure is so much faster in situations like this because the light doesn't change and therefore the exposure doesn't change. But if you try doing this in, a, in an auto or semi-auto mode, it may change the exposure according to your composition if you've got bright or dark things going on there. I'm focusing just the other side of the rock. I think the depth of field should be big enough. 
yeah you see how much more interesting it is just to have that bit of rock in the foreground it's just kind of giving us more of a sense of place this could probably work if you turn the camera the other way up as well let's see let's get a little closer this time a bit lower let's see i'm putting the rock in the middle now let's just move that much and put the rock just slightly to one side let's see what we've got yeah I think it looks better off to one side a bit. It just works a lot better. It gives us a better feeling of where we are. This is a cool place. Imagine what it would look like if the sun was setting over there somewhere. Oh, and by the way, kneeling down on rocks, PM something or other jeans, it's on screen right now. They've got padded knees, they're motorcycle jeans. If you're not a motorcyclist, I recommend you buy some because when you want to get down low and kneel on some rocks as a photographer, it's just comfy instead of going, oh, ah, oh, ah, because it hurts your knees. These bad boys are awesome. Another unusual road sign to find, but I thought you might enjoy it. <laughs> it just means you've got to keep your head down as you come through here because there's baddies about. Actually, we're crossing the military firing ranges. All this area, there's, there's a lot of military activity. There's Bobbington Camp where the tank regiment live. Absolutely. Beautiful countryside though. Hmm. Somebody's tank. is really pretty. Very near here is a place called Lulworth Cove. This, I believe, is the little village of East Lulworth. Looks like it belongs on a chocolate box, doesn't it? Now, Lulworth Cove is almost completely circular. I haven't been down there for many, many years. Is this it? That goes down to Durdle Door. Lulworth Cove this way, it says. I once had a flying lesson. My instructor allowed me to stand the aircraft up on its wingtip around Lulworth Cove. And that was just really great fun. But it's a very pretty little place. Of course, it can be completely overrun with tourists. But, you know, it's a nice spot. And at the moment, it's term time. I very much doubt it'll be that busy. I could be wrong, but we will find out in a minute. Either way, I'm hoping It'll be a good spot to take some pictures. Hmm. Motorcycles. That looks like a good place to park. As I'm sure you can see, it is a very well-rounded cove indeed. But we're losing the impression of how rounded it is because we're down here, sort of in amongst it. You can't see the scenery when you're in the scenery, so we need to get out of the scenery and go someplace else. Probably up there. I think that could be a really good point. Impressive, isn't it? but not even the GoPro can get it all in, in one go. Look, you can see the bay, but look, there's all that good stuff going on over there as well. 
it just won't all fit in. So what are we going to do? We're probably going to have to employ what I'm going to call a kind of proper bit pro landscape photographer technique. We're going to make a pano. We're going to take a bunch of pictures and then stitch them together. Yeah, I know this is kind of going a little bit above and beyond. How do we do that? Basically, I'm going to use the camera this way up and just shoot slices beginning over here with the village and then all the way across the bay and then we'll join them together in the computer. I'm going to show you how that's done but it's still part of composition because you've got to think about how am I going to make this work. Something that's really important when you do this technique is you're better off to make the lens a bit longer and shoot it vertically. Let's have a look. I think that is my field of view. Something, yeah, like that. You've got to keep the camera nice and level and you've got to make sure you get the vertical straight and you must overlap by a third of a frame pretty much every time. So, shall we give it a go? Manual exposure is imperative because you don't want the exposure changing halfway between shots because if it does, then there's going to be a mismatch. Let's do this. So, also focusing. Everything is pretty much beyond infinity. I'm using f13, so we should have everything nice and sharp. I'm just going to put it onto manual focus so the focus can't change while we're doing it. Let's start over here. And I'm just going to check to make sure my histogram doesn't go off the end as I do this kind of movement around here like that. No, I think we're good. Exposure's good. Make sure that I can keep the camera level. I can. So, click. Then you just kind of register where the last shot ended and you take another one. And then you just register where it ended and you take another one. Notice I'm kind of moving around the camera rather than just sort of swinging the camera from side to side because it just works an awful lot better if you kind of pivot around the camera rather than just willy-nilly swing the camera. Here we go, I think that is our shot. So what we've got is all of these verticals, yeah? And then back in the office, we are gonna join them all together into one image. Before you can do things like this, you've got to know how to control your camera. You've got to know how to think like a photographer. You've got to understand composition. And that's what we've been doing throughout this video is looking at composition. How can we make the best out of something just with our composition? All that, putting things in the foreground, using things in the distance. These are little things that you can learn that will make those memories of days out just so much better. If you'd like some help with that, have a look at some of my online courses. I've got a masterclass which will tell you everything about the camera, light and composition. It will make you competent with the camera and confident creatively. And that is really important because then you can move on to the advanced stuff. And that is using this thing, thinking like a photographer. Advanced photography has got nothing to do with bits and pieces and kit and gadgets and giggles. It's got everything to do with you and me, the photographers. Anyway, let's whip back to the office and I'll show you how you do that. I use Adobe Photoshop Lightroom for my post-production. I just find it does everything it says on the tin. Of course, there are many other types of software available. Here are all those vertical slices that we took looking all the way across the bay. But I also, after the camera had stopped, shot some doing it in a horizontal format. I just wanna show you the difference because I prefer the vertical ones stitched together. Really easy to do this. Just go into the develop module. Here are our shots. Just shift click, select them all, right click and choose photo, mer photo merge panorama. Now Lightroom's just sitting there, look at that look. It's taken all those vertical slices and it's joined them together. Isn't that cool? We're not gonna get lost in a Lightroom tutorial here, but just briefly spherical and cylindrical. If I click on cylindrical, it's just, I don't know what it means, but it's just a different look. Personally, I find the spherical one works better. I just think it's got a more natural look to it. We click merge and Lightroom is chuntering away here and it is building that panorama. It's stitching them together. It's finding all the little places where the photos join up and it will even do an auto post process. And there it is. I think that looks pretty good just as it is. As you can see, these are the adjustments Lightroom has put on it. I might tweak it a bit and just make it a little tiny bit darker, I think. 
Let those highlights come up a bit brighter. I like it a bit punchy. To me, the colours are not great. I'm going to take a little bit of green out by pushing in just a touch of magenta. I might take a little touch of yellow out too. That is the tiniest amount. So here we go. It is back to here and to there. That is all I would do to it. How easy is that? And then finally, let's just look at doing this with a horizontal format. When you stitch them together, it's exactly the same process. It'll go away, it'll give us a preview. We just say, get on with it. It looks pretty good, but I just think you get a slightly nicer look from shooting vertically and stitching together that way. Here it is, here is our panorama. Let's just compare the two, flick between them quickly. Let's get rid of that. Now, there is a slight change in composition. What I like most about these two is the vertically shot one. We've got that little bit more foreground. I like to be able to see this bit of detail down in here. But also, look what incredibly high resolution that is. And that is because we are joining together more photos, more pixels, and that gives you a much higher quality image. Which one do you prefer? Pop it in the comments below. I'm intrigued to know. Please like, share and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. It helps me make more and it makes sure you don't miss any if you ping that notification bell. And finally, if you'd like to see any of these photos and others taken on my Photo Biker series, there is a link in the description area below to my images. Have a click on that, come and check them out, see what else we've been doing. I wish you well, it's been great fun riding around with you and I look forward to seeing you next time.